What is up guys, this is Luke Hill for KitGuru, and in this one we're taking a look at a new mid-range CPU cooler from Zalman. This is the CNPS 10X Performer Black. Despite featuring the same name as the CNPS 10X Performer, that's going to be a very tiring say throughout this video, I can promise you that. It's actually vastly different in a number of ways versus the non-black version that launched earlier in the last decade. And, as you'll notice, no RGB. That's going to be a massive plus sign to a lot of people, I know. Priced initially with a target of around about £33, but realistically being available sometime later this month at about £38 to actual buyers. This cooler sits firmly in mid-range CPU air cooler territory, so let's take a closer look. Before we do that though, if you like what we do here at Kikuru, you can give us a like and subscribe and support the YouTube channel like that. You can join the YouTube channel as a member, and as always, you can check out the Kikuru website. That really helps us out. Let's get back into it. If we start off first by taking a quick look at the bundle and the instruction manual that comes with it, uh, it's basically just a quite simple black and white, nothing particularly complicated, and the instructions are, yeah, they're fine, I guess. If we look at the bits that we get, then it's going to be the usual Intel AMD mounting hardware, so this supports all your modern Intel sockets and, of course, AMD AM4. Notably, you get a sachet of thermal paste, which I've clearly already used, not a tube. That's a bit awkward if you want to do more than one mount, for example, if you're taking this cooler off sometime down the line to give it a clean. And, somewhat disappointingly, no second pair of fan clips, so this is primarily a single fan cooler, even if you want to upgrade it in the future. If we look firstly at the CPU cooler itself, as the name would suggest, Salmon has gone with an all-black design that I personally think looks really good. This is a dark black finish that is pretty high quality for our sample at least. I would actually go as far as saying this is Be Quiet-esque, which is really high praise from a quality perspective. Salmon advertises the electrophoresis application method for the coating, and I must say the consistency is very good. The heatsink weighs in at 860 grams of mass and has reasonably large dimensions of 135 millimeters wide and 155 millimeters tall, so watch out for that width when it comes to interference in your build. Zalman does, however, do a really good job at mitigating RAM interference by offsetting the heat sink. So it's basically an asymmetric design, and this should give you some really good RAM clearance because of that offset approach. And in terms of actual dissipation area, the heat sink has 9,271 centimeters squared of dissipation area. Kind of a pointless fact, because you're not really going to understand what that means. It's just an arbitrary number, but cool nevertheless. Excuse the pun. Running through the aluminium fin array are four 6mm diameter copper heat pipes and these emerge from the heat pipe direct touch base. And as you can see, Zalman actually spaces the heat pipes on the base quite conveniently for coverage along a larger heat spreader, the likes of a Ryzen chip. The density of the fin array is probably what I would term average. It's not particularly dense and it's not particularly spaced out, so clearly designed for just standard type fan speeds, not particularly low or passive cooling, and not particularly high speed fans like we'd see from a radiator, for example. In regards to the fan, Zalman supplies a 135mm model with the code ZM10XPB-PWM. This annular fan design is touted by Zalman as offering more focused cooling and better low noise operation, both of which seem like fair claims given that the actual bracket of the fan is somewhat isolated from the casing that it sits in. Pretty cool design there to be fair. We'll have to see how it performs in our noise testing of course. This 135mm EBR bearing unit is clearly a defined step up versus the typical 120mm generic or somewhat higher performance fan that you would typically get from a sub £40 CPU cooler. So it will be interesting to see how this pairs with the CNPS 10X Performer Black. I'm already bored of saying that name, quite frankly. Too long, too confusing. The fan is powered by a four-pin PWM connector, and Zalman includes a short black cable. Perfectly happy with that. The speed range is 700 to 1500 RPM rated, and that's not particularly great, to be honest. 1500 RPM for a 135 mil unit is perfectly fine from a performance perspective, but 700 RPM is not particularly low, and that's not a particularly great speed range compared to some of the other models from Arctic, for example, that offer a semi-passive mode and significantly lower low speed operations. So 
perhaps not ideal for noise tuning from that perspective, but that can be forgiven if the actual performance from the noise perspective is fine at higher speeds anyway. And with the fan in place, the cooler actually extends to about 95 millimeters in depth. So you can see it there, not particularly massive, but for a kind of sub 40 pound unit, it is quite chunky. Watch out for VRM heatsink interference. Salman does, however, obviously use retention clips for the cooler. So if you prefer, you can mount at a higher level to try and avoid some interference. That really is quite useful. I do like this design approach as opposed to a static frame where you can't move the fan height. One minor point to note with the fan is that its rated mean time between failure, according to Zalman, is 50,000 hours. And that doesn't particularly instill confidence when 80,000 hours plus is very common for even this price range and below. And that ties in nicely with the somewhat confusing and a bit weird, quite frankly, warranty situation for Zalman, which seems to be 12 months for all of their coolers. But we spoke to our contact at Zalman and they said actually for the UK, models sold through the distributor VIP computing, you actually get a 24 month warranty if the retailer allows for that. <sighs> yeah, very confusing. Either way, 12 months, that's shockingly bad as far as a warranty goes for a modern day piece of computer hardware such as a CPU cooler. Uh, cooler Master is offering two years, which is not great quite frankly, but then be quiet, you'll get typically three years uh, Arctic, you'll get 10 years. Even someone like uh, Salentium PC, who offers budget coolers, six years. Obviously, Noctua got superb warranty. 12 months, 24 months, whichever way you look at it, not good at all. Pretty disappointing there. If we now take a quick look at installation, for the AM4 platform, that starts by sticking a rubber spacer onto this multi purpose bracket. So, this is both AM4 and Intel. Basically just a stamped sheet of metal, nothing fancy whatsoever, but pretty decent rigidity. You've then got some metal pins that go through and you've got some edge spacers. And this is, it's not really not very well explained in the manual, so much so that I'm doing it on camera right now and I have quite literally no idea whether I'm doing it right or wrong because you've got different angles to the metal and you've got different pieces here, which look pretty much identical, but in the manual, you have to spot which orientation it is for the Zalman writing. You then hold these in place and then you pop them on with a piece of plastic. Yeah, not a great method if I'm being perfectly honest. It's just overly fiddly, overly complicated, easy to get wrong to start with, and the manual doesn't do a great job at explaining it. Once you have the back plate set up, however, it's a case of holding it in position behind your motherboard, locking in the standoffs with the washer, of course. You can then drop the brackets on top and lock those in position and then you just slap some thermal paste onto your CPU, slap the cooler on top. You then use the spring-loaded thumb screws which are not retained in the bracket with the CPU cooler which is a little bit disappointing but not that big a deal and a good point is that you get fantastic accessibility for a screwdriver so nothing like Be Quiet or Noctua where sometimes you have to go down through the heat sink, Cooler Master is another one. Good access for a screwdriver, no problems there. So that basically rounds it out and then you can just clip the fan into position at the height that you desire. So overall, a solid mount, a sturdy mount, not particularly difficult, but that initial method with the bracket and the push pins and the several holes, as you can see, and the pretty poor explanation, that's a bit annoying, but it does get quite straightforward and very sturdy as you move on. So I'm not gonna to grumble too much. For testing, we're using our usual go-to Ryzen 9 5950X CPU cooler test system. And this choice allows us to put a lot of power and a lot of heat through a CPU cooler so we can manage the cooling performance that we wanna try and identify. Typically, we would use a 4.45 gigahertz overclock for some of the higher end coolers, but realistically, a mid-range offering like this just doesn't really cut the mustard there. We actually saw 100 degrees Celsius quite quick, so we canceled that test. And instead, we've introduced a new mid-range test procedure of 4.1 gigahertz with 1.225 volts in the BIOS. And this is around about 180 watts of CPU package power on a competent cooler like this. We also test with Precision Boost Overdrive, and we think this is a really good way to see what type of clock speed and power level that the cooler can handle from our Ryzen chip under sensible temperatures according to the AMD algorithm. 
And then our partner in test hardware is a Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master motherboard with an excellent VRM solution. We've got a one kilowatt Seasonic TX1000 power supply. We've got a Gigabyte RCX 2060 Super graphics card in zero dB mode. And we use 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4. Our chassis of choice is the Fractal Design Mesh Phi 2. Leo really liked this case when he reviewed it. Great front airflow, great top airflow, and we use two 140mm 1000 RPM fans for front intake, and we've got two 140mm exhaust fans also. For testing, we run a 30 minute loop test of Cinebench R23, and we record the steady state temperature at the end of that 30 minute period. Ambient is maintained around 23 to 25 degrees Celsius in our room here in the UK. And if it varies out of this range, then we add additional tests just to ensure consistency of the data that we've collected. If you want more details on our test procedure, our test hardware, and all the other information, then head on over to the Kikuru webpage where you can find it out there. The prime comparison for the Zalman CNPS 10X Performer Black is going to be the Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3. So this comes in at about £45 in the UK, but it's quite comparable. It's a pretty big, pretty bulky single tower cooler with a single fan. We also have the Arctic Freezer 33 eSports 1 CPU cooler, which is practically the same as the Freezer 34 version that you can now buy for about £30 in the UK. However, this didn't really complete some of our testing because the performance just wasn't up to scratch. So you'll only see that in certain scenarios. As we already said, this is one of the first times that we've tested this new 4.1 GHz frequency on our test system. So you'll have to forgive us for not having many CPU coolers in the charts but do check back over the coming weeks because we have quite a batch of mid-range CPU coolers to test, so you will see the data and the comparison numbers grow. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's start off testing by looking at noise performance at 100% fan speed. Round into 40 dBA noise output at our usual 12-inch test distance from the Fractal chassis. Zalman's cooler delivers excellent acoustic results. In fact, only Be Quiet's marginally less noisy Shadow Rock 3 can outperform the 135mm Zalman cooler by a within margin of error 0.2 decibels. Put simply, the CNPS 10X Performer Black is equipped with a fan that is superb for low noise operation, even when it is full 1500 RPM operating speed. The results of 40 dBA noise output also mean that there's no need for added charts showing our usual 40 dBA fixed noise output testing. That's the performance you get at full fan speed, so that's the performance we'll show going forward. Let's have a look at our Precision Boost Overdrive test results. With a temperature target of 90 degrees Celsius according to the Precision Boost Overdrive algorithm and our Gigabyte motherboard, then realistically what we want to see here is which CPU cooler can handle more processor power at a lower temperature if it goes below that 90 degrees Celsius target, not really expected from mid-range coolers like this. And also we want to see the higher clock speeds, that's the important one. So make sure you know what you're looking for when you look at our charts. Higher package power achieved is better, lower temperature doesn't necessarily all mean all that much unless there's quite a big difference and higher clock speed is certainly better. Firstly, it's critical to note that small differences in the display delta temperatures are not important for our PBO testing as the clock speed and cooling power achieved are more important metrics. Zalman's CNPS 10X Performer Black manages to cool 204 watts of CPU package power from our Ryzen 9 5950X CPU. This translates into an average CPU clock speed of 4260 megahertz. By comparison, the slightly more expensive and marginally lower noise Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3 tolerates 202 watts of cooling that translates into 40 to 30 megahertz average clock speed. Between the two, Zalman's option is a slightly higher performer and allows the chip to deliver marginally higher clock speeds. In fact, Zalman does a decent job at closing the gap to some of the bigger dual tower coolers such as the Arctic Freezer 50. And the budget Arctic Freezer 33 eSports 1, which is very similar to the current Freezer 34 model that is around £30 in the UK, is comfortably outperformed. In fact, Zalman's slightly more expensive cooler offers more than 300 MHz higher clock speed capability for our Ryzen processor. That's a strong victory for Zalman in our opinion. Now we can look at our 4.1 GHz fixed frequency overclocked thermal testing. Because this is fixed frequency and fixed voltage, then the results are directly comparable. So here you do want to look for better temperatures, so lower temperatures are better. As we've already highlighted, this is about 180 to 190 watts of CPU package power on a competent CPU cooler. And as we've also already highlighted, this chart is pretty slim for comparisons. We do have the Be Quiet in there, but it's a new test we've added. We're going to be adding more CPU cooler data going forward, so check back for that. 
With the Zalman and Be Quiet coolers directly compared in a fixed frequency scenario, the CNPS 10X Performer Black comes out on top. Zalman's sub 40 pound cooler manages a delta temperature of 51 degrees Celsius, whereas the more expensive but slightly lower noise Be Quiet competitor is around 4 degrees hotter running. This represents another solid victory for Zalman and reinforces the performance that we saw delivered in the Precision Boost Overdrive test. Checking the VRM temperatures for our overclocked cooling run, we see that the 135mm fan used by Zalman is perfectly competent in providing incidental airflow. Less than 70 degrees Celsius on the VRM temperature sensor of our Gigabyte motherboard is nothing whatsoever to be concerned about. And even with the higher power Precision Boost Overdrive load applied, the cooler still put in a result of 72 degrees Celsius VRM temperature for that 204 watt CPU package power cooling load. Stellar job there, in our opinion. And if you're interested in stock cooling results, the Zalman cooler managed 33 to 34 degrees Celsius delta temperature, over ambient of course, and that was with a 128 watt package power load. That is very similar to the physically larger and more expensive Arctic Freezer 50 in terms of thermal performance, though the Zalman cooler did deliver a slightly lower clock speed of 3.85 GHz average versus the Arctic cooler's 3.87 GHz average, but of course that Arctic cooler is about 10 to 15 pounds at least more expensive. If we summarize then, we're happy with the performance offered by the Zalman CNPS 10X Performer Black CPU cooler. Versus a direct, reasonable, realistic competitor in the low noise, single tower, sub 45 pounds price range, the Zalman 135mm unit actually manages to offer better performance than the Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3. And it does that with only a small increase in noise levels. So as far as balance goes, that's a pretty good outcome. And if we look at the Arctic Freezer 33 Esports 1 scoring, which granted is an older version now, but still about £30 worth of CPU cooler, the Zalman is far superior, especially when you're really pushing those power levels. And the noise levels from that 1500 RPM 135mm fan are very tolerable, at about 40 decibels from a 12 inch distance at full fan speed. No complaints from me there, none at all. There are some clear down points that need addressing. The warranty situation is confusing and quite frankly weak. The minimal speed operating range of that fan is about 700 RPM, which is not particularly low in 2021 terms, especially when you've got some semi-passive competitors from the likes of Arctic, so not great there. And quite frankly, I would have liked an extra set of fan clips so that I do have the option of going dual fan in the future if I really do want an upgrade. However, we'd say the styling and quality of manufacture is very good for our sample. I do really like the design that Zalman has gone with, and I do like the finish here. As I already said, very Be Quiet-esque, and that is high, high praise. The RAM and VRM heatsink compatibility are very good, thanks to Zalman's smart, asymmetric design for the tower and adjustable height for the fan, so that's good there. And the mounting system, while a bit confusing thanks to the slightly awkward bracket procedure and the less than ideal instruction manual, it is very sturdy and it worked well in our testing. So again, another good point there. At around a £35 conceived price, but realistically more like £38, £39 in the UK later this month or so we're told, I don't really see many major downsides for the Zalman CNPS 10X Performer Black CPU cooler. Good performance, solid low noise operation, pretty sturdy mount, great aesthetics. So yeah, there are some downsides we've already pointed out, but overall on balance, I think it's a pretty good CPU cooler. Just let us know what you think about our warranty situation and whether that's a bit of a deal breaker for you or do the non-RGB pure black looks at this mid-range price point, do they tick your box? Let us know. I've been Luke Hill for Kick Group. Thank you for watching this video review of the Zalman CNPS 10X Performer Black CPU Cooler. I'm really glad that's the last time I have to say that name. It is not easy. Try saying that on camera a bunch of times quickly. If you like this review, give us a like, hit subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. You can support us in the usual means via Patreon, interact with us on Discord, join the Kick Guru channel as a member, and make sure you check out the written Kick Guru website. Leave your comments and your feedback in the comment section down below and I will see you in the next one.